first-time badass, your friendly neighborhood psychonaut, back with a video that I have been meaning to put out for an incredibly long time. Um, and this is about Silene Capensis, aka African Dream Root. Um, African Dream Root is supposed to give you very vivid dreams in which that uh, they say you'll encounter your ancestors. There's a theme of being bathed in white light in these dreams. Um, and they're supposed to induce lucid dreams. So I'm going to basically go over the methods and my experiences with it and let you guys benefit from my experience because I was really interested in African Dream Root when I heard about it. I wanted to try it because I'm so into lucid dreaming and consciousness in general and I was like, I should try this. So I got some and I posted the video that I would be trying in the past. Um, in one or two of my videos, you actually see me drinking that as I'm kind of talking about something else. And here I've finally kind of gone through what I'm going to go through with Afri African Dream Root and let you guys know what to expect. So um, basically African Dream Root, uh, if you're going to try it, I recommend at least trying it the traditional method, which is the way that it is accepted to be used with the native peoples who do it today. Um, so. I mean, why question that? If you're going to try it, I, yeah, why not try a couple of different ways, but start with traditional, traditional. Um, and that is where you basically grind up the root, you put it in some water. You, They traditionally use this wooden fort thing to um, kind of twist in it, and that makes it froth up. Um, I tried doing something similar with like a wooden spoon, and it just wasn't cutting it. So what I actually did is I put it in a jar, um, and I shook it up and that made it froth and then you just ingest the froth. Um, the thing with that is you have to ingest the froth until you are completely full, like your stomach has to be full of the froth. You have to be to the point where you're about to vomit up froth because you have to gorge yourself on it this way. And that is the way the native peoples do it. That is the way that I tried to do it. Um, and in fact, they, um, they do this in the morning, first thing in the morning, um, on an empty stomach, and that's how I did it. I tried it for a while in the days, I tried it for a while in the nights. Um, mainly in the days is when you want to do African Dream Root, like as a whole, like when, the, when you wake up, because the amount of time that it takes your body to process all the chemicals for you to actually get effects from it, uh, it takes a very long time, and it takes a few days. Um, I've kind of build up to actually get anything out of it. So for a few days, if you're going to try African Dream Root, three or four days um, at a minimum of doing this every single morning with any of these methods. Um, because I've tried most of these methods, and I've tried most of these methods both in the uh, morning and in the night. And if you're doing it in the night, it's just it's not going to do as well. Because about the time that the chemicals release, you're going to be up, and it's not going to be very beneficial to you. So, uh, the traditional method um, does heat some results. Now, I want to tell you guys that overall, African Dream Root, I think, is a wonderful substance. And I think that it does have its uses, but it does not live up to the hype of the description of it. Um, I did not have any encounters with my ancestors. I didn't have any change in my level of lucidity, um, which... I mean, for me, maybe that maybe that's typical because I'll lucid dream frequently, but I mean, there's still times when I don't lucid dream, obviously. Um, I mainly noticed from, from African Dream Room, what African Dream Room has to offer, like, as a whole, is relaxation. Um, I did notice that when I was on African Dream Room, um, I was more relaxed when I went to go to bed. So... Um, it's not something that made me groggy throughout the day or I didn't feel like I was dragging or anything like that during the day. But when I got to the point where I was like, I'm going to lay down and go to sleep, it was easier for me to relax and it was easier for me to go to sleep. So that's a good thing for me in and of itself. Um, I'm a person who is very hard for me to relax in general. And if I do get to a relaxed state, it's very, very rare and the, the slightest change can completely disrupt that and then I'm up again. So with this, I did notice that I did not have to meditate before going to sleep. Um, I was able to just lay down, my body felt relaxed, my mind felt relaxed, and I could go to sleep. So that's a great thing for African Dream Root. 
Um, the other thing that I noticed with African Dreamer is it doesn't really increase the vividity of your dreams, but it does increase your dream recall. You are, in my experience, more likely to recall your dreams with African Dream Root. Now, I am a frequent lucid dreamer. My dream recall isn't very bad at all. But, I mean, there there are still dreams that I don't remember throughout the nights. Um, people have m multiple dreams throughout the night, and ordinarily I'll just remember one or two. With African Dream Root, I was writing down like three or four dreams a night that I remembered. So it does increase your dream recall. So if you're just starting out, or if you're kind of a veteran, and your dream recall could improve, um, or maybe you just want to see if it can improve, um, I would suggest African Dreamer for that, because it, it definitely helps your dream recall. Um, dream recall, relaxation, um, everything else is just kind of hearsay about it. Um, one, one experience that I do give African Dreamer credit for I'll explain here in just a moment. It, it's not like a groundbreaking experience. It's it's just something that I felt um, was different and something that I felt that African Dreamer may have contributed to. So um, in this experience, I was doing the traditional method. And I was doing it in the mornings, and it was like the third or the fourth day into that. Um, I had this experience where I laid down, I went to sleep, and I was conscious but it was like I was watching something on a screen. So if you guys are frequent lucid dreamers, you probably already know that you'll have experiences like that anyway, um, from time to time. Um, it's basically you're just you're just a viewer, not a participant in the dream. It's literally like I felt like I was looking at a screen in this dream, and I was just the observer. I was conscious. I probably could have changed something if I wanted to, but I was just kind of like I'll go with the flow. I want to see what happens here. So I, I'm looking at this scene, which is like in a room, it's like a bedroom. There, there is a bed, um, from my view, there is a bed, and then behind the bed there's a, um, there's like a dresser, and it's got, there's a couple different levels to the dresser. There's like a space for knickknacks, and there are knickknacks on, these, on this dresser, there's pictures on the wall, um, and there's someone vacuuming in the room, and I never saw their face, it was just like the, the screen <laughs> was showing me this much, and their head would have been like up here. Um, so I just saw someone walk by and vacuum and leave the room, and I, I was just staring, and I look at the knickknacks on the dresser, and my vision zooms to this view of these knickknacks, and on the higher shelf, there's like a little angel knickknack, and on the lower shelf, just below that, there's like a little flower knickknack just like a white flower with like the yellow center, just typical flower. And so I'm just looking at them, and all of a sudden, the color in the dream starts to become very vibrant, very bright colors. And then as that starts to happen, the flower starts to close up. All of its petals start to go inward and form this sort of shape. And as the flower starts doing that, the arms on this angel start raising up in the air, and they both just stop at the same point, which is the angel stops here, and the flower stops when it's closed, and they stop at the exact same time. And the color is continuing to get brighter as this happens, and then like the edges of my vision start to turn white, and it's just really bright, and then the flower opens its petals again, and it basically, boom, pops out like a, a seed from this flower, it, so like it basically spits a seed at me and it goes right into the camera, right in my point of view, and as soon as that happens, my vision goes dark and I see the name of a person. And I actually remembered the name of the person and I wrote it down in my dream journal. Um, I woke up right after this. Um, I looked into the name, but I didn't really find anyone about it. Um, it, it's probably nothing, it's probably just something that, you know, my subconscious made up. Um, it's probably something without a lot of meaning. However, um, that name was Eric Gay, so if you're out there, buddy, what's up? Dreamt about your name. Um, but that's pretty much the only experience that I would say 100%. I feel like African Dreamer did something for me there. 
Um, I tried it in a lot of different ways. Um, I tried a lot of different times, a lot of different um, diets. So I'll go over that a little bit more. Um, so basically the traditional method, got to try it at least once, why not? Um, now the traditional method kind of intersects with cold extracts in a way. I don't know if you guys can read this at all, like, eh, good enough, I'll let you know what it is. So, um, traditional cold extracts. Um, you can turn the traditional method and kind of make a hybrid with cold extracts. Um, if you don't know what cold extracts are, it's basically where you grind something up, you put it in some water, and you put it in the fridge, and you basically let the cold do its work. Uh, a lot of times with this, you'll be putting citric acid in there or other chemicals, depending upon what you're extracting. Um, with this, the only thing I tried was like a squirt of lemon juice in one of the cold extracts, and I didn't notice any difference with that. So you can actually kind of connect the traditional with the cold extracts because you can actually reuse some of the day's preparation for a couple of days, which is also what I ended up doing. Um, so if you have a jar, you put the water in, you put the um, ground up root in it, you shake it up, you use it for that day, you put it in the fridge, it starts to become cold extract and the cold will extract some of those chemicals into the water. And then the next day you come out, you shake her up, there's more chemicals in there for you this time because of the amount of time that it's spent in the cold soaking and getting the chemicals extracted. Um, I haven't noticed the difference between the two of these, so if you just want to do a straight up cold extract, you can do that, because I tried that on its own as well, and it's pretty much on par with the traditional method. I did try hot teas. I tried hot teas. Uh, actually, I tried all of the methods I tried. I tried ingesting them in the mornings, and I tried ingesting them in the evenings. Um, so I would be like, this week I'm going to do it in the mornings, next week I'm going to do it in the evenings to see if I notice a difference. But really, as I said before, you really want to do all of these methods, any method that you try in the morning. So hot tea, um, it works, it does, but not as well as the cold extracts or the traditional method. I think it's just the temperature. Um, I think that the heat may have um, disrupted some of the chemicals. Um, I mean, it'll work. It'll work for you. But I say cold is, is, is the better way to go. Um, now, hot tea, you don't get as relaxed. You will still have the dream recall, but um, just minor differences, really. Just slightly less. It was enough less that I noticed a difference and nothing more. Um, chewing or sucking on the roots. This is something that I said in my last video. I'm not going to try that, and I'm not. I have terrible teeth, and I'm not going to go chewing on like this wood kind of material. Um, I'm not going to suck on a root because I have no interest in doing that, and I'm sorry. <laughs> so if you want to try that, you go ahead and post your results. But uh, I'm not going to do that because like my teeth are so fragile. I couldn't. I have to watch what I eat anyway. I couldn't do that, and I have no desire to do that. Um, one method that I did not try, but I want to try. I just don't have the means. Um, I tried to do it. I tried to actually make one, but I couldn't. Basically, this is an oil extract um, tinctures. So basically, um, you make a tincture, which is you can put it in a little vial, and it's higher concentrated. Um, whatever is in African dream root. So like all of the chemicals that is in something, if you make a tincture, you're concentrating them into an oil. And whereas that way, you just need a few drops to use it instead of like using however many grams of like a root to do traditional. I mean, you're still gonna be using probably all the root that you have to make a tincture, but it's it's highly concentrated. So you just got, you know, a couple of drops a day that you will wanna use. Um, you can put it in drinks, you can drop it right under your tongue. It's, something like that. Now that's something that I tried to make and failed. Um, what are you going to do? I have no experience with it. Um, and I didn't want to waste any more roots, so I was like, I'll just move on. You can purchase tinctures on their own. And I've talked to people in the Lucid commu community on Reddit, Lucid Dreaming. Um, I've talked to some people on there, and they say that this is the way to go um, with that. So I would assume that the, this would be the best method based on the people who have described it to me. Um, traditional method, it works, and I think it, it works damn near the best if you, if you do the 
cold extracts of the methods that I tried. Um, and I say do it that way, but you have to eat a lot of froth to do it that way, whereas tinctures you're getting um, higher concentration with less, so you won't have to fill your belly up and be all gross and icky um, and actually have gas a little bit too. You're not going to have that with tinctures, so if you can try it, um, if you want something that I hear, I don't know from experience, that I've heard is a surefire way to get some good effects and strong effects from African Dream Root, then I would suggest a tincture and let me know or post a video about it or something because I would love to see more information out there on African Dream Root because what is true for me in my physiology may not be true for you and your physiology on this. So this could interact with me differently than it could interact with you. But overall, African Dream Root, there is a lot of hype about it, but um, it relaxes you when you need to relax. When you're going to bed, you're going to be more relaxed. It's going to be easier to go to sleep. And to me, that's invaluable. And Dream Recall, if for nothing else, Dream Recall is the reason to try African Dream Root, any of these methods, because it will improve your Dream Recall. Um, again, like I, I remember one or two dreams a night, and on African Dream Root, I was remembering three or four dreams a night, so um, I was writing a lot in my dream journal, and overall it's just a positive thing for lucid dreaming, so um, if, you, if you increase your dream recall, and you write it down in your dream journal, you're making dreams more important in your subconscious, and you'll start to notice more dream signs that you maybe didn't even know that you had, and you can write those down and, and remember that you know, I'm dreaming if this happens, because this happens in my dreams, and I didn't even notice it because I hadn't tried African Dreamer. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to say on it. Um, I hope that all you guys searching for African Dream Root find this helpful. Um, ooh, one more thing, I almost completely forgot. Meat. Eating meat, they say with African Dream Root, um, eating meat will diminish the effects, the effects or make them have no effects at all. Um, I'm here to tell you that you can eat meat on it. It does affect it a little bit, a tiny bit, but a slightly noticeable bit, a bit amount. Um, so I've experimented with these methods with different meats. I've tried um, just white meats. I've tried just red meats. I've tried no meat, which was so freaking hard, and. Um, processed foods like fast foods, meats, and that sort of thing. So red meats, it seems, will diminish the effects more than any other meat. Um, white meats are probably the best meats to eat with this um, and still get pretty good effects. Um, you can eat fast food meat and that be like the only meat that you're eating because here in the U.S., um, you guys probably already know, if you don't, you might be interested in, interested to know that if you go to McDonald's and get a burger, and let's say you get a friggin' quarter pounder, and you see this little awesome slice of meat on there, and you're so ready to eat it, that's not 100% meat in that patty. Um, they are legally allowed to put things in our meat that isn't meat, that's not food. Your burgers are, are not 100% meat. Um, the patty is not 100% meat. So, and that's just in the U.S. that I know of. I know other countries, um, they have to have pure meat. And I think the U.S. should move over to that, but we're not because we're crazy. Um, so, you, um, the, the most diminishing effects come from red meats, then, then from fast food red meats, um, and then from white meats, pork and chicken. Um, they're pretty okay. I mean, there's not a whole lot of difference between not eating meat and eating white meats on African Dream Root, but not eating meat, it does help a little bit. A little bit. Um, but, I mean, all of all of the levels of how much it works when eating meats and experimenting with these different meats, it's, 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 not, a, it's not so much that you, that you need to not eat meat um, or even certain types of meat you can eat or anything like that. It's noticeable, um, but you still get the effects. Uh, if you want, like, as strong effects as you can get and as much dream recall as possible and as much relaxation as pro possible, probably don't eat meat or probably eat white meats while you're trying this. But otherwise, I think that does it. I hope that this is helpful to all you guys. Uh, I know I was really upset when I was, um, searching for African Dreamer, any information that I could, and there's maybe one or two videos on YouTube, and they never really say much about it. So this is my definitive 
post for what to expect with African Dreamroo. I think it's a wonderful thing, but not for the reasons that they tell you it is. So yeah, I think that about covers it. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this in the future. I'm Spacetime Badass.